What's up y'all, Shuffle? We're going to be doing a video idea that I got from a viewer that asked about battle decision making. And I do have a whole Let's Play series, right, where I do a lot of this same kind of thing, but uh, I do realize that having played for so long and stuff like that, there are a lot of decisions I probably make without saying them, or I feel like they're a little... I shouldn't say intuitive, but uh, I usually don't announce them, so I feel maybe I should just overly <laughs> take the overly analytical approach to everything I'm doing. So I apologize for the delay in uploads here. This is going to be a little, uh, this is going to be about making teams and making choices when you're fighting things. And uh, the cl it, I think this is a good foundation going into the class guides because like, okay, this is what you're looking for when you make teams and then you're looking at characters to put in those teams. So that's kind of my my goal here, so let's see. I have Notaronis, but let's see if we need them. And the first point I will make is probably the most obvious one, uh, but consider where you're going, right? The ruins, warrens, all that stuff, and find out, or try and understand what's good there. You know, if it's your first time playing, I would definitely recommend against looking up stuff. You know, it's a little more fun, I feel, to go in blind, but, uh, I mean, a, a lot of that stuff you can pick up pretty quick. You know, like you go into the ruins a couple times and you go, okay, I can't use bleed attacks. And then you go into uh, the wield and it's like, oh, uh, a lot of these things have protection, so direct damage isn't as strong, right? So you, you start considering those things. Then you should consider the mission you're doing. For instance, a activate mission, you have to take three items with you at the start, which makes uh, early treasure gathering a little harder. So, things to consider about that. And if you have a boss, sometimes the boss plays differently than the the area, if that makes sense. Like, for instance, the cove, it's got the, un, or was it, the Sodden crew? The, the, pirate, the pirate ship, you know? When you're going through the cove normally, um, you know, it's all eldritch, and then the boss is unholy, right? So, it's a little, it's not so much a bait and switch, but it's like... You know, if I go in there with a bunch of Eldritch killing talents and quirks and trinkets and all that, and an occultist, it's going to be uh, way less strong against a boss like that. So you have to think about those things. Ah, uh, voice crack. Uh. <laughs> but let's see. What else? So then you have to develop a strategy. Like, how do I want to beat this mission or this boss? And for instance, I've already done this. Not on Blood Moon, so I might die horribly. We'll see. But the... Wolves at the door quest is when, not this one, it's this one, when Volferoni attacks you, and he's a human with bombs, and uh, it's a bunch of bandits that attack, so it's like, okay, they're humans, right? Who's good against humans? That would be someone like the bounty hunter, right? Bounty hunter gets bonus against humans, just straight up, so he's pretty good against that. The other is, this gets easier if you know what the boss is. You know, you only fight Wolf one time in a playthrough. Meanwhile, these other bosses, you fight them three times, besides Darkest Dungeon, stuff like that. So you can kind of laser focus your strategy here, but... Since I know what Wolf does, I know he throws bombs, it's kind of like the Prophet's thing. So I'm looking at a... probably this specific... Uh, man at arms because he already has hard skin. And I want to tank the bombs with this. Let's see if there's anyone better, so... When you think of your strategy, like right now my strategy is to defend, like to guard against the bombs and soak it, and have maybe some stuns or something else that's really good against the the bandits that we're talking about, and so we're going to go through each one individually, right? So I'm thinking about the boss right now, and like I said, I already know what he does, and so I'm looking for whatever... Uh, I don't think we need scouting in there. See, I'm looking at whatever class fits that best. So, like, you know, I have my strategy already. Your strategy may be something different, depending on the mission. So you start looking at the heroes you want to take, and then seeing how they line up in there. Like, let's say I'm doing something in the wield, and I want to take this class. Like, okay, he has wield scrounger. Or if I was going, I need a man-at-arms, I'm going to take him into the warrens. Well, he has this, so I don't, want, I don't want to use that. And I would look for someone else. See, they both have this. And so I'd probably take him, right? Uh, oh, and he's got this too, see? You start looking around, I mean, it's, it's a little intuitive. But since this guy has things I want, I'm going to take him. 
Uh, the bandits, like I said, this helps when you know what the enemies do. There are a couple multi-hitting attacks, like you have the big bandit with the whip, and you have the bandits with the gun that hit everyone, and then you have the like the knife bandits that can hit two people at a time. So that's a lot of spread out damage, so I'm looking for whatever my best uh, vessel is going to be because she has a group heal. And then she also has a consistent heal. I don't want to gamble with the occultist. I think I did that the first time and I didn't like it. Uh, there's no camping in this place, so even though this class gets way better with camping, um, like I would, if there was camping, like the 100% take this character, like every time I think, but, uh, you know, so he gets a little weaker without camping, so things to consider that way. But we're looking for a Vestal. I'm not taking this one because, for one, there's this. Uh, I don't like that. And for two, oh, I didn't even, I think I just got this character. What is this? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, let's see. We're going to look for one. The Hamlet doesn't have its own, like, zone quirks. So we're looking for... Really, anyone that has a bonus against... Right here. Right, we're going to take this. Because this is a bonus against humans. Um, she has a lot of extra damage, surprisingly. Uh, this is not cool. And we don't care about that. So this is probably what we're taking. Right, unless I see this again. I, I Do I have six vessels? Jeez Louise. So, could consider taking her because, you know, Faded's alright, Irrepressible's pretty good, Photomania's really good, and she has no negatives to the area. Right, I don't think there's any disease, there might be, but I'm going to take this because the bonus damage, like being able to squeeze out any extra damage is good. She already has a lot of stress, but it's a, uh, or I shouldn't say a lot, a little stress, but it's a short mission. And then the next two, be a little tougher, I think. I'm looking at a... I'm definitely looking... Yeah, I'm looking at this. Not so much for the bonus damage there, but for the minus stress. And the reason I want to take a Plague Doctor is because... Um, some of the bandits... Like, the, the knife bandits have prot. I can't remember if the boss has prot. Sorry about that. But yeah, and the boss has multiple turns. Or multiple actions in a turn. And I want to exploit that. So that means that these blights tick twice a turn, which is really good. Uh, I have stuns. Her stun can get really high anyway, so that should help. What you call it? That should help with uh, managing some stuff. She also has like the group stun, so those big battles with you know four bandits or like the big bandit and two small ones behind him. You know this does a lot of work. And if I really want to, I can give some damage buffs to my my nuker, or yeah, my main damage dealer. And I have two stuns to do stuff with, all that, so definitely taking her. And then the last one to consider. I'm almost looking... Oh, he's got Eldritch. Beast Hater... Actually, is he still good? Um, he's good. Nope, never mind. There it is. So let's see. I only have... Two? Me, the freaking the S class or yeah, the S tier highway man guy has two highway men, okay. Probably this guy. So the reason I That's okay. You might be below fifty percent a lot, but just have one really good quirk, no negatives. Um uh, the reason I would take this character is because bleed, and you can exploit that more. There's actually a case for a flagellant too. Mm. Let's think about that. So, that's bad. Like none of these, these all suck. So what's this? That's okay. That's good. Also good. So the reason we might take this is because there's some extra healing in this package here, and there's uh, more damage over time, and this is part of the strategy that we're talking about, right? Where damage over time is strong. Is very strong against bosses that have multiple actions, but also stuns effectively stretch out your uh, your damage over time effects, right? So the way I always think about it in terms of like the logic and the math and stuff is, let's say I land this for five points, you know, on the back line, and then I stun this, you know, stun the two in the back. I prevent two turns. I do an extra five damage with my stun and give all my other characters. Uh, 
a chance to like do something else or recover or focus fire something else. So there's a lot that happens when you you know stack a stun on top of a damage over time effect. It's just really high value, and we're gonna do we're gonna talk more about things like action economy and stuff. And I, this might be the video for that. I can't remember. Yeah, I have it. Okay. So it's a pretty tough choice between these two because he's gonna have a lot of damage output, but the mark synergy will not be there. And so it's like, well, what if I get a stun off? You know, that's pretty good, 60% damage against that, but... Uh... Not as amazing as I would hope. So, like, 35% takes him from what? Like... It's about 12 to 24. That's actually pretty strong consistently, right? Whereas this character will be hitting for... That's... Yeah, it's right there. So it automatically counts that, but otherwise this is, uh... This is, I think, 6 to 11 or 6 to 12 or something like that. And on top, it's another 6. But also, since the boss takes two actions a uh, turn, um, this is hitting for effectively 18 to uh, whatever the top end is on that. Like 18 to 24 again or some shit. So, there's a good, there's a big case to take this character. I have 5 to 11, okay. So, we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be up there. So, I might... I might take him. It's tough because I'm really just looking at this damage bonus more than anything else. And I think I'm going to squeeze more damage out of damage over time than I am direct hits. This character will be better getting to the boss. Because they're all humans, he's just going to chop them down pretty hard and stuff like that. But I don't have anyone to set him up with a mark. And I don't need to mark anything else. I don't need to use a stun. I already have two. I have a third one if I want it. And... This is okay, I can't remember if the boss goes to the back or not, so... The only bad part about the strategy is the attrition aspect of it, where... I'm gonna just try and bleed the boss out the whole time. You know, and it's gonna do some good damage, but it's not as strong against the one-turn bandits, and I think this guy summons them, and this would be stronger against that. Like, he could just start hacking through them pretty quickly, with Precise Striker and this, that's plus 16% crit, that's up to 28 before any uh, trinkets. Which, like, if he's critting, he's probably one-shotting these bandits. This is actually a tough choice here. So I'm gonna outfit these characters first. I might take Repose. I want Rampart, I want Guard, I want Bolster. And then I don't know what the other one is I want. Um, Because this becomes, this is good if I have the the bounty hunter. So I think we might, oh, this is really tough. I'm, I'm going to come back to it. Uh, let's see. I don't think I need this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to try and switch this to one of these two when I get through there to the end. And let's see. Because if I take the Flagellant, I'm probably going to take Repose, or Crush. And if I take the Bounty Hunter, I'm taking this. So, we'll think about that. If you're still here, after all this this, uh, this chat and rambling and stuff, more power to you. But Alright, sorry about that, I had to step away. But in the meantime, I filled out these selections. I think we are going to take the Flagellant. And so here we have Speed and Dodge. I'm not too concerned about Stun and Move. I can't remember how many of them have it besides, uh, I think the dagger ones have, like, a push. Not a pull, though, so I'm not too concerned. Obviously, really good trinket. Uh, healing and survivability. I don't have anything else to really put here besides, like, I don't know if I have another healing trinket. I probably do, but whatever. Um, uh, let's see. This, bleed. I don't think anything blights in here. I can't remember, but there is some bleed, and that really helps him. You know, with the bleed resist, and then just this to have uh, some extra dodge and a chance to not freaking die. Is between that and the Martyr Seal, but I like the defensive aspect a little more on this. I don't know, it's hard to say. Right, the... I almost feel like the Martyr Seal is always better, though. Yeah, that's tough. And you get more death blow. Like, does this put me up to 87? 85? Yeah, I'm gonna use that. Okay. Oh, man. When do we ever use Eternity Caller? Really, though. And then here, 
We're just going to stretch out all the protection we can and make it even better with more hit points. I never use this. And when I saw it this time, I was like, oh, that seems pretty good. Uh, there is a case to use this instead, but that feels like it might be overkill. I'd rather have the... There's a diminishing return on uh, prot at some point, I'm pretty sure. So having more health would probably make this better than the no prot. Or the, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And diminishing return, if, you ever, if you've never heard that term before, that is like, the more you add to something, like the less value you get from it, if that makes sense. You know, if you want your like intro to economics kind of thing, it'll be like your third piece of pizza is less satisfying than the first, right? And that's just a, a human experience way. And I still was gonna take repost if I took the flagellant, so. I think we're good. I think we're good to go. I'm gonna Yeah, I probably don't even need to change anything. Okay. Uh, let's see, last second, last second. I am slightly nervous about this, but we'll see. And so, it's a short mission. I'm just gonna take, like, everything, basically. So, oops. And, why not? I cannot remember... Fuck it. Take those two. <laughs> Just in case someone needs it. Alright. Uh, embark? Okay. Wow. Oh, there's no... There's no Wayne June intro. That makes me sad. Uh, I think he's just, like, up here. If I remember correctly. I might check him out. <laughs> oh! Dudes! So, really good here, because now we can hit these stealth guys. I forgot they did that. These are the, yes, the upgraded versions. I thought they had the wolf-looking ones. Oh, I hate this order of this. Uh, so we're gonna do what we said here. We're gonna stretch out our... our damage. And why not even stun this guy? Why not? Music attack. Alright, so this is the strategy of this comp. It's stun a bunch of stuff, get dots rolling, buff, and then uh, try and have try and like leverage that advantage. So he's even first. Actually he's got 13 speed, geez Louise. Okay. Oh, I'm supposed to be talking about what I'm doing here. Okay. So, like I said, we're dotting these two because he decided to go first. That was actually really good on our part. And Obviously, uh, we stunned. I like to stun before doing extra damage because um, the... There's a weird place to talk about this. I still think it should be its own video, but... Uh, in terms of choices, there's a term if you haven't played like a tabletop RPG, you may never have heard of it, but you still may have, who knows. Uh, it's called Action Economy. And what that is, is what can you do on your turn? And how impactful are those things? Since Darkest Dungeon is largely a one action turn, uh, turn denial becomes incredibly, incredibly important. It's like one of the strongest things you can do. Just having someone skip a turn, right? And so, if you look at your actions, all these do something, right? We like those. This is the probably the one, it's not the most inefficient action, because it still does something, because you can set someone else up. Passing is the most ineffective action. I mean, that's probably... It probably goes without saying, because you do nothing. And take stress, but... Uh, usually, you want to hit one of these buttons. You're not happy to hit this button. And if you have to hit this, uh, something went terribly wrong. So, like, I think I've hit this once in my entire, like, 500 hours. <laughs> so... Uh, the reason we chose to stun first is because... That lets these dots tick down even further. Like, this guy is guaranteed dead now, because of this. And he's at five. So if I hit this, uh, the one damage plus the blight is gonna get him killed. And by stunning three people, it gives us a chance to focus fire. And so when we're talking about action economy, like I said, denying turns is the best thing you can do. 
and if someone has multiple actions, we try and exploit those. That's why DOT's uh, DOT's damage over time, like bleed and stuff, becomes more powerful. And the... I think one of the biggest traps I see with new players is they feel like they might, uh, they might waste damage. You know, it'll be like, oh, that guy has one hit point. You know, I'm going to wait until... You know, I'm not going to use my bounty hunter to kill the one hit point guy. I'm going to wait until my Vestal can clean him up with, like, a two damage Dazzling Light, you know? And then that guy might get an extra turn off in the middle of, you know, between this and that, so he gets to do more damage, you know? And you don't want that. If you have a chance to kill something, you want to kill something. Outside, you know, exceptions noted, sometimes you want to wait to finish something off or whatever, because, like, a mechanic or whatever, but... Normally, you want to focus fire big threats first. Or, like, the easiest threats to get rid of. For me, it's easiest to clean up these two and get these guys after. And so we're focusing on removing both of these at the same time. And so that's why we're going to use this, obviously. And now they're both dead. Like, it doesn't matter what happens here. These are considered dead. I never have to look at them again. I don't have to touch them. Um, this one has damage on it already. And it also has more prod, so this bleed's going to be a little stronger. So I want to hit that. Because I feel like, even though he only has six more hit points than that one, uh, yeah, it's a little easier to chew through that. And so here, I'm going to rotate my stun, because this way, now I deny this turn. And so I only, through this entire battle, I've only had to deal with two attacks. If this lands, it should, because we got the crit, yeah. And he went first, that was unfortunate. If I had Crush, I would consider hitting him first. Right, and then finishing him off that way. So these are guys, these are guys, yes, these guys are both gone. He's dead. So I can do this. Oh, alright, the fight's over. Cool. Destroy them all. I don't have to do anything. Like, at this point, if I had a... If I had a stress heal or something, I would try and milk it to get something else, like, out of, uh... There's nothing I could really... You know, okay. So, decision making, right? We're gonna try and maximize advantage here. I'm trying to get her to go first. Before him. Because I want to see if I can get the stress off of killing him. Press disadvantage. Give them no quarter. I think I did. Yeah. Okay. See? Right? I could have just killed him with the flagellant, but he was guaranteed dead already, so I wanted to stretch that uh, advantage as far as I could. Okay, these are the guys we're talking about. The wolf ones. The actual wolf ones. These guys are obviously much tougher. I like that they're both together back here. Uh, stealth. I forgot. There, I don't think there was stealth when I did this the first time, so this makes it a little tougher. But thankfully we have a guy that's not stealth, so we can double target pretty effectively. So, yeah. As before, this guy's pretty strong. I want to get rid of this guy because I don't want him cleaving my whole team with that shot. I'd rather... It's easier for me to heal a single target taking stuff than it is to heal like the 6, 5, 3, 2 that he's going to constantly do. Got pretty fortunate there. Same strategy, right? We're going to keep bleeding out the back. And so next turn, it's good that they both went first too. Because, see? Some good damage right there. But it's good they both went first because that guarantees me my dot ticks. I did say I was going to stun first normally. And I probably should have. The more I actually, yeah, that might have been a mistake. I should have stunned. Because that's not, uh, it's not mega conducive with our strategy right now. But it just, you know, want to get that damage rolling. So, let's see. If I stunned, I think the same thing happens. I still think it's better to stun first because there's a chance that, um, like, I could have them go again and they only get one attack off. Oh. It, there's a chance that one of them dies before I have to stun again. And yeah, I don't know. I think that it, I think it's still better to stun first. So this is a tough choice. Uh, here, you're like, oh, it's easy, right? I just hit Divine Comfort because everyone's missing some hit points. And that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, there's a case for this. Because she's missing some hit points. But the thing that I think people 
misplay a lot with with the Vestal is the fact that Judgment heals for a solid amount. So I could zap this guy, right? Because I want some health here. And if I zap him, I do damage. I further, uh, you know, the fight and killing them. Like, this is a very efficient action. This is, like, this is a proactive thing. I get to try and end the fight quicker while healing. This is a reactive thing where I just heal and that's it. I'm reacting to what the enemy's doing. You'd rather, if you can, you want to dictate. You don't want to have to react. You want to be proactive. That being said, I may still hit this because these guys are so evasive, right? That at 77%, it's still a little rough. I'm not too keen on missing that. And this is still mega efficient. So we can do that. And... Here, I have a choice. I could use this, and I think I guarantee kill both of them. So, let's see. I don't think they're going to go before her at 11. There's a chance. If this thing goes before her, then this was a mistake. But on average, uh, she goes first. And so I'm sitting here like, oh, I could... Uh, you know, what am I going to do with my next turn then? Like, I could use her to stun one of these. So it's really, do I want to stun one, or do I want to... Uh, use him to start bleeding one of these. And I'm actually going to go for the stun, I think. A powerful blow. I think the stun is more appealing. And it also prevents that situation. Okay, so that was the right call. And now, I got lucky to go first here, which means I get this. And since they have really high blight resist, I don't want to blight them. And uh, I'm all right. We're going first. I'm try and keep the stuns going. So that worked out pretty well in our favor. And now I can judgment for free, pretty much. I got that. Should heal for like six, seven. Yeah. See. Really good use of a turn. Uh, this thing. So right here, this is where the person would go. I don't want to waste damage. Like I'm gonna waste my. Um, what is it? My bleed take, right? I get. I probably get two bleed ticks out of this. I get one here, but I'm still taking that. Because I want that thing gone. Well, it marked me. I wasn't paying attention. Alright, we're gonna try and zap again. Alright, that that was a risk worth taking. You know, we're not missing too many hit points. We're more interested in the accuracy debuff. Getting the blights, always good. And we're gonna try and sleep. Okay, that should work, right? So here, this thing is guaranteed dead over two turns. So I can stall the next two turns, right? It's going to take seven this turn, and it's going to take seven on its next turn. So I'm going to do this to try and stretch out my my stuff here. Uh, it doesn't matter. I think it only matters if I crit. If I crit six, then this is a mistake. Okay. Oh, never mind. I miscounted. I'm dumb. I've been looking for that. So actually, what I what I should have done is I should have moved with her to stretch out my turn, and then I should have group healed with her using Divine Comfort. And the reason is not so much, there are people missing hit points, right, these two, but if I do a group heal and one of them crits, I have three chances to get stress off. So that was like the most efficient turn I could have did right there. It's just not to. Because I forgot. Because I didn't think I was going to get the Blight thing. Oh, that worked out. Or she was down like 60 hit points or something. I think she had a bleed that she ended up curing. Yeah, we get a couple death stores here. Like over this fight. And it's important to not be terrified. It's tough not to be. But as long as no one has a bleed and stuff like that. You're a little more safe. Also, the there's a sequencing thing there with the Vestal that, you know, I'm doing this like live post commentary, so I'm not pausing it or anything. But we did the single target heal first in case the flagellant did something with his bloodlust affliction where he didn't want us to, you know, heal him. He's like, you know, hey, piss off. So if he told us we couldn't use the single target one, we were gonna use the group heal one after. And we're doing it a second time. 
We have one more attack. He's guaranteed dead. I can't kill him with this. So what has the higher crit chance? This. See? We're just trying to maximize the advantage right now. So getting more crits, obviously. And I'm gonna guard again. Stack up here. A victory. Perhaps the turning point. Don't need blood anymore. Is this coming off? Oh, we get it for one round. The light, the promise so I think there's a fight here. I think it's the boss. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's it. Oh wait, never mind. Okay. <laughs> like, whoa. So this thing, you can... If I brought the Bounty Hunter, I don't know, you can kill this barrel each turn. But if you think about it too, the barrel is soaking up 30 damage that you could be putting on him each turn. Probably more because you're likely overkilling it. So I would rather just do this. Especially because I went first, I'm trying to exploit this uh, multiple turn thing. It's good that they both went first. Right, look at that. So now these two things just did uh, 26 extra damage. And this blows up at the end of the turn, so we're not too worried. There's a case to stun him. I don't have a high chance to do it, but also there's nothing really impactful to do with my turn. I could fish for another crit with Divine Comfort, but I'd rather just try and stun him. Okay. It's one of those things that's like, I say it quite a bit in like my, uh, my playthroughs and stuff, where if I hit this, I'm far ahead. You know? Oh, I forgot he stuns. That actually kind of sucks. So... This is probably the toughest turn we're gonna have. Because it's like, I want to... Bolster. Like, I almost need to bolster. And he can take this hit the best. But also, if I guard, I'm going to have to guard next turn. Does that make sense? I'm going to have to keep guarding, and I'll never get to bolster. Unless it lands on someone that's already guarded. But I think we're going to do it anyway. I think it's still the smarter choice most of the time. So he's guarding that guy, which means we can stack bleeds onto him. Without having to cleave these, which is actually really good. He honestly did me a favor that way. And I had it in my head too, I was like, I should probably guard the Vestal. So, this... Because if I hit this, I get reposted. Reposted. I don't want that. And so the easiest way to get bleeds onto him is to just hit the person he's guarding. And the strategy right now is... Uh... I don't really have a chance to stun me either, so it's not like I can get it off. But, you know, you're probably thinking, like, well, Shuffle, there's adds, and these adds are going to start, like, cleaving you down and stuff like that. And that's true. He's, he's going to summon adds every turn. These guys are just soaking damage that I could put on him. But then also, since my damage is all damage over time in this team comp, I want to put as many on him as I can, because he's going uh, gonna to start melting, like, this turn. Oh, I was stunned, that's right. I was like, why did my flash only get a turn? So, I could group heal. I'm between group heal and stunning this guy. Hmm. I don't have a high chance to stun. Let me this. Oh, that was pretty good. That was the best one to crit. Still got his prod up, so that's pretty good. Alright, we don't want to get bled. And we're going to guard her. And now our prod's at, what, like 80? 60, yeah, 80%. So these bombs aren't doing anything. He's taking 20 a turn. Oh, I hit my damage dealer's dog. Excuse me, wolf. That's best case scenario. Man in arms. A little tough to use sometimes. Like, you kind of... It's one of those things where, like, the man in arms... You don't always want to use him, but when he works, he works beautifully. So, very good niche pick. Oh my god, I hate this. So I dodge it, but I still get hit with it. That sucks. Um, you know what? Hmm. Do I want to eat the repost? I actually wish that the Plague Doctor went first, because I would try and stun 
one of these to move back behind him. So, let's see. Missing would be absolutely terrible right now. Hmm. I'd also have to hit it a second time to guarantee that it dies at some point. Or it's Ether Post. Uh, let's see. This is actually tough. So I guess... This is what my guts tell me to do. I guess we'll go with it. I'm gonna have to hit him twice though to finish him off, which is not ideal. So, oh, yep, I miscounted. Not miscounted, but I screwed up there. Cause I wanted to stun this guy to try and shuffle him back to get him up to the front where I don't have to worry about the bomber posting and stuff like that. But I did not. So you know what? I'm gonna hit this and just make sure this thing dies in two turns. I guess that was the best use of my turn. But you see what I'm saying, right? I'm never going to get a chance to bolster because of... Uh, because of the stupid bomb. So I actually... You know what? I should have. I should have bolstered on turn one. You know, and it's, it's funny that this one... That one choice... I said it was the hardest turn for him. But that one choice is like having an impact every single turn because... He could have took, you know, the 30 that he would have took, and I could have healed him up at this point, because she hasn't had too many great turns. And now I can't, uh... You know, can't do that. So... Well, it actually sucks that he's bleeding out, because I... Hmm. He's guarding a lot, so I'm going to keep him topped off. Ooh, good dodge. Yeah, stress is going to be a big deal in a minute here. Oh, yes! Yes, I can bolster! So we're going to exploit this to stack damage on him again. Before this thing bleeds out, hopefully. Yep, okay. That's what I wanted. Finally! It's here. The bolster. Oh, the dodge already doing stuff! Blah, blah, blah. Man, that bleed resist is low. Uh, gonna heal here. Momentary That's pretty abatement. garbage. Zone for like something higher than five. Alright, bolster not doing stuff. Well, I mean, it took some stress off there, but. Him getting stressed out is like afflicted is probably the worst right now, because if he passes a turn. Like, that's how I die. If he passes a turn where. I should be guarding, then someone's gonna be a death door. So we need to. I need to stop worrying about this thing here. Impressive. Take the eight. Yeah. A brilliant confluence of skill. Um, and oh, I'm dumb. I forgot he was guarding. That was a mistake. See, I made a snap choice right there. But now I also know how much damage that does. But this is what I want to do. I should have just meleeed this, because he's giving it to me. I think we've dodged two times so far since Bolster came up, so... Can't really prove that it's explicitly because of Bolster, but definitely helpful. Crit on the wrong person. We're starting to get nervous here, but he is taking a ton of damage. Let's see. Okay, we gotta do math here. What's 18? Is that 40%? I could do it in my head, but I don't want to. So I'm going to do 18 divided by 44. <laughs> it's 41%. I think I have to lose one hit point <laughs> before I can use uh, the other skills, which means... Here it is. 12? Man, these are falling off, aren't they? Oh, stop it! <laughs> yep, he's going to... He's going to go off on the next one. 
so. Uh, that works out. How much time is... I have 60 prop for three rounds. Oh, this, yep, now it wore off. Grievous injury. Oh! You know what? He's still guarded. I may guard him again. I don't know. I'm gonna go for this. He's gonna try and finish this. Can it stop? Can it stop? Oh, it did it! No! Oh, he did it! Woo! Alright, we're good. This fight's over. <laughs> oh, man. I was so... I was like... I wasn't salty, but I was like fucking sad. I was like, why is it critting me? Every time. This is when she like rolls an A, so I'm not gonna do that. You know what? No. Yes. Okay. So we're doing the single heal. Because I want to uppercut next turn. Because there's a chance where I use this, it high rolls, he heals for eight, and then I can't use. I don't have exsanguinate on. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? I have reclaim. <gasps> Alright, we screwed up. It's okay. Like, this would have sealed the fight if I could, you know, hit this, because he was guarded. I could easily just punch him with that, and then the fight's done. I mean, it's pretty much over now, but, like, he could have killed three of us next turn. I'm pretty confident that this doing uh, 18 damage or 27 extra damage just wouldn't have mattered. Or, like, it would have made any dying completely irrelevant, so. Uh... There's a case to repost. Because I'm actually not sure if repost works against the bomb. So there's actually a science test right here. That sucks. Oh yeah, actually if I got moved out of the way that'd be pretty scary. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh it does. Oh that's great. That's really good. Was he? He's taking 16. He's dead. Wait, no, no, no. I gotta, I gotta hit him one more time. So I could go for the the game winner here, but this is just too, too juicy, too juicy to pass up. Look at that. You know, right there. I want to tell the occultist to eat shit. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna go for this. Yep, that did it. I don't have to do anything. Now, I can do this. I can't remember if I have to kill these guys. Ooh, the buff, what's this do? Extra damage. I like how he's not taking his turn, by the way. It's like, um, you know, he's waiting here. <laughs> there we go. Oh, we don't have to clean him up. Nice. Uh, I think I already have this. As victories mount. So too will Scouting. Resistance. Hmm, you guys want to do some treasure? Since we have a bunch of food and... I didn't use any of these. I can't remember if I have these. Like either of these, they're both good. Uh, actually, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. So, what is this? I don't think you can get rid of this. Yeah, you can't. Get rid of something else, though. Yeah. So, let's see. I forgot what this room is. Glad I kept the shovels. Glad I kept two shovels. So we're gonna get some treasure, hopefully. So I think last time I did this, I just freaking left right after. Oh, it's the cove wreckage. Oh. Ancestor trinket. I think I have all of them. Alright. That worked out. Okay. I forgot what the side rooms are, but let's just get out of here. So, man, it's going to be a long video. Um, probably not much editing that I'm going to put into this. Like I said, I just wanted to really, I don't know, show at least how I think through turns and stuff like that. Because... I'm sure that's going to help someone. But otherwise, this kind of felt like a let's play. LOL. Uh, ew. Yeah, that's it. So, the... 
grave robber thing. I'm gonna start working on it now. I'm gonna try and work on it again. Tragic extent of my failings. And I am, I'm hopeful. I think, because what ended up happening was I wanted to. It, it was nice to edit everything as well as I could. And when I started doing the class guides, I felt I was doing more without editing. Like I was just talking, which is fine, but I. I think it's better and just more appealing to look at if editing is a forefront kind of thing, so. I'm going to be working on that. It's probably going to take me a couple weeks. I have a exam next week and all that, but yeah, so. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this helped you out at some point, and feel free to pester me on like Discord and Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, those links are around, and I'm going to get some lunch. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.